Welcome back to Philologic. Today we're going to be covering the basics of categorical logic. Let's get started. Categorical logic is the logic of categories. It deals with the kinds of inferences we can make given certain categorical statements. In categorical logic, you'll be dealing exclusively with categorical statements. These statements have four components. First, there's the quantifier. This tells you how many things you're dealing with. Then, there's the subject, which tells you the category you're quantifying over. Then you've got the copula. This will tell you whether the subject does or does not belong to the predicate, which is the category at the end of the statement. In categorical logic, there are only four types of statements. We'll use S to stand for the subject and P to stand for the predicate. All S or P is an A-type statement. No S or P is an E-type statement. Some S or P is an I-type statement. And some S or not P is an O-type statement. As you can tell by the A, E, I, O, this is pretty easy to memorize. A-type statements are known as universal affirmative statements since their quantifiers are universal and they're telling us that the subject does belong to the predicate. E-type statements are universal negative statements since their quantifiers are also universal but they tell us that the subject does not belong to the predicate. I-type and O-type are known as particular affirmative and particular negative. I'm sure you get the affirmative and negative stuff by now and they're particular because they're about only some of the members of the categories rather than all. The four types of statements as I've shown them are all in what's called standard form. Unfortunately, things are rarely so neat in the real world and you'll come across all sorts of messy categorical statements. So when doing categorical logic, your first job will normally be to translate these everyday categorical statements into standard form. Sometimes that'll be easy, other times, not so much. I'll dedicate a future video to sharing some tips on how to translate these statements. For now, here's some general advice. Conditional statements, those that go if, then, are always universal, though you'll have to pay close attention to whether they're affirmative or negative. When you see every or each, it's usually a universal statement. Not all always means some are not. And if you ever see only x are y, that always means all y are x. I'm going to upload a bunch of videos on this topic, so be sure to stay tuned if you want to learn more. See you next time.